So our next speaker is James McKinnon, who's going to talk about bidirectional transformation. Thanks very much indeed. Delighted to see such a huge audience and so many people registering for the workshops before ICFP even starts. Now, this is a workshop now on dependently typed programming and generic programming. I'm going to be more dependently typed and less generic. I'm also really going to emphasize types from the conceptual point of view rather than the writing programs point of view. But uh, uh, that's perhaps reflected in my title that I really see this as a study in proof relevant semantics. So I'm going to announce a theorem. Time is short. This is only an extended abstract and then hopefully give you a flavor of some of the details. So the idea is if we take proof relevant seriously and look at what it means to witness a relation, be it a bisimulation relation between labeled transition systems or a consistency relation between data structures with a distinguished notion of update, so we already saw this in the diff 3 talk, then in fact taking proof relevant seriously allows us to see those two previously distinct classes of phenomena as essentially one and the same thing. And the meaning of by simulation when viewed through the Curry Howard lens is actually to see that as the type of a consistency restoration function. The right way to uh, organize the material for this is itself has a, uh, itself has a proof relevant aspect which is say if we take the basic data of category theory seriously then we need a certain amount of additional information for witnessing when arrows are equal and describing exactly how little more that you need to do that I hope motivates how we might get to the idea of by category uh, with bicategories, there's a distinguished example that you all know, namely the bicategory of relations on sets and inclusions between relations. Uh, that's somehow an important motivating example, but it also plays a technical role in this discussion. Uh, bicategory structure appears both for the underlying notion of relation, taken seriously in a proof relevant way but also that the, the bicategory of bisimulations maps down to uh, rel just by forgetting the, uh, the proofs that things are bisimulations. And that preserves all the structure on the nose. So it's a, it's a propagandizing for Curry Howard, perhaps we don't need to do that anymore, but the more we do this, the more we, the more we take dependent types seriously, I think the more fruitful are the connections and uniformities we're able to observe in areas of disparate areas of computer science. So, so there are particular consequences of this theorem, one of which is already in Popple and ICFP we've seen a zoo of bidirectional formalisms, largely in this community organized around the idea of lens, but certainly there are many others. And this is a way of providing a uniform characterization of that zoo, and with it the prospect of a structure theory and a way of organizing how to give semantics and hence subsequently semantics-driven design of future BX languages. Uh, I'm not a process algebra person. I'm not really a bisimulation person, so I'm not so familiar with the rich literature on model checking associated with computing by simulations, but having built a bridge between these two worlds, we might expect to gain transfer of proof techniques associated with by simulation in the process algebra literature and the ability to compute consistency restoration or conflict resolution in diff um, in the setting of bidirectional transformations. Uh, of course, as a dependent types person, Proof relevance is important because of eventual downstream implementations in dependently typed languages like Agda or Idris, and eventually we might hope in Haskell when its type system gets up to scratch. Um, but for the time being, as I say, I don't want to emphasize programming as much as proof objects allow us to have data to work with out of which we might build explanations of why things are consistent, why structures align, basic phenomena in this area. And then in a much longer range prospectus, 
the idea of de dependable and semantics-driven foundations for model-driven development based on books. So what's the basic scenario for this? Um, two circles, um, A and B, data sources, who knows what they are? They might be strings, they might be file contents. We have a notion of model, little a, little b, big A and big B are so-called model spaces, and a notion of update from A to A prime that might simply be stateful. We might have no knowledge of how we got between them, just that we did. And coupling them together is a relation R which says that A is consistent with B. And the basic scenario for bidirectional transformations is, from the A point of view, I make a change to my model, and you as a developer B on the other side wants to make a companion change which maintains the consistency invariant between us. Correspondingly, if you B make a change, I want to be able to respond to that. This was first formalized already in the HCI literature by Lambert Mertens with the idea of consistency maintainer. And for the simply typed view, we just have a subset of A cross B uh, defining consistency and functions with those two very simple types associated with correctness and consistency conditions which enforce this basic picture. So if R holds between models, then we shouldn't actually change when we update. That's a condition I'll return to later. But also, after restoration, we should indeed enjoy the consistency relation. Okay. So we want correctness and somehow a conservativity property. There are many examples of, the of this in the literature. As I say, for the ICFP audience, it's most familiar through the idea of lens. But certainly, this appeared already in the 80s with the analysis of the view update problem by Bansion and Spiratos, the idea of view update with constant complement, from which well, very well-behaved asymmetric lenses are derived. The PL literature, as we know, abounds in progressive definitions, including increasing amounts of intentional information between asymmetric lenses, symmetric lenses, matching lenses, edit lenses, quotient lenses, relational lenses. The basic picture I sketched and the basic uh, Merton Stevens uh, formalism is at the heart of the OMG standard for model driven development called QVTR, which is essentially a prescription of how to deal with uh, UML derived models. Uh, so we <clears throat> it's the view I, I offered in the scenario that we have developer views of a single artifact and we're attempting to successfully propagate updates consistently between those. Uh, but again, there's another parallel literature and a parallel engineering discipline from the graph grammars community of using triple graph grammars to organize this data. Um, and as I mentioned originally, Lombert's original paper, um, essentially deriving from MVC-like interfaces. Now, the lens picture, for those that are not so familiar with it, two rather simple and simply typed functions get and put between a master data source S and a derived view V. And we can see the asymmetry between get and put. Uh, get has a boring type. S loses information to yield a V. But put takes a new V and an old S from which we might hope to recover a new source. So within the, within the general setting, it's quite easy to see that the types of the restorers, forward and backwards, are just reflected in get and put. And I've put in v cross in the type of get that, that is not used in order for the types to match up. But one of the things which is implicit or even missing in the lens literature is that lenses do indeed enforce an underlying notion of consistency. It's quite a simple-minded one. It's just the graph of the get function. But much of the work in developing the combinator languages for lenses is essentially to, to have for free as a theorem that complex compound lenses have the corresponding complex compound consistency relations at their heart. What about simulations? Everyone knows what about simulation is. It's just two pictures. Um, but 
What happens if we take pictures seriously? So in the dagger diagram, A makes a move from a position where A and B are consist uh, consistent, what am I saying, related by the bisimulation relation T, and B, the transition system, should be able to make a companion transition to A in order to also uh, arise in the T relation. And there's the double dagger diagram, which is essentially just the symmetric flip of those. Now, what does it mean to take proof relevant seriously? Well, it's not just that updates, sorry, transitions, are witnessed by data, but also that we have proofs for or data witnessing A related to B by T. But it isn't just that either. This is a pair of diagrams expressing for all exist propositions. So for all exist propositions are going to become dependently typed functions, and I have a pair of them, so I'm going to have some complex sigma type of these two functions. And one reason for considering a complex sigma type is it's going to be relative to uh, the underlying T. So we can think of a bisimulation relation as being given by a dependently typed triple of a T and the dependently typed functions whose types are essentially dagger and double dagger appropriately expressed. Great comic timing, thank you for that. That was a huge mouthful, a great gulp of air, my mouth is dry, but that's the heart of the talk. So if we just stop there, we're done, provided you know how to interpret these things in a sufficiently dependently typed way. Uh, Expressed in terms of the calculus of relations, where the tense product symbol O times corresponds to relational composition, uh, we can express those just as inclusions between particular relational composites. I'm going to jump ahead and anticipate what I'm going to say about the bicategory of relations and just say, I'll organize this data as a bicategory where the naught cells have some particular structure. The one cells are the bisimulations, and the two cells are now proof relevant inclusions between relations. And if I express a relation as a dependent type family, then what's a, what's a proof relevant inclusion? Well, it's just another dependently typed function that takes an A and a B and a proof that the left hand side relates A and B and yields a proof that the right hand side relates A and B. So, I've more or less said all of that, but now in one slide, that's the definition of a bicategory exemplified by REL. Um, <clears throat> it's a technical definition which some people, notably Popple reviewers, consider challenging for uh, the theoretical computer science community. So, so let's just make a remark that we know that pre-orders are categories. But indeed, we can think of a category as a particular kind of proof-relevant pre-order, because every arrow is given source and target information associated with the underlying pre-order relation that the source is somehow less than the target, and identities correspond to reflexivity proofs. So we can think of categories as proof-relevant pre-orders. We also know that monoids are distinguished particular cases of categories, one object categories, where the associative and identity composition in the monoid structure is now reflected as boring arrow structure in a category with one object, where the source and target are always the same. Synthesizing these two ideas, we get towards the idea of a monoidal category, where there's monoid structure on objects, and now, instead of the monoid equations between associative compositions, we now have arrows witnessing those equalities. So we can gradually build up within the repertoire of categorical structure that we know already, proof relevant accounts in which we're then able to observe richer structure. We also know this in the FP community with Atkey's analysis of parameterized monads. So if you think of an ordinary monad, it's somehow a thing that returns a value but has a source and target state that is hidden. 
A parameterized monad is essentially a monadic structure which takes its source and target state seriously. So return takes you from one state to itself, and bind takes two computations from state A to state B and state B to state C, and returns a computation from A to C. So in some sense, that idea of putting source and target back into an associative composition lies at the heart of categories, but also in other situations like those of relations where we have an associative unit or composition. So what do bidirectional transformations look like this in this setting? I realize I'm now out of time, but I've said it all already with the constant Freudian slips between updates and transitions. Updates are transitions. And a model space is just a transition system. In fact, it's not just a transition system. Those objects have also been observed in the literature by Kai and Osterman and others in the context of incremental computation. So, so the notion of uh, change structure in uh, the incremental lambda calculus paper can be recast in this uh, point of view. So model spaces are transition systems. What about consistency? Well, I've said we'll do this with a dependent type family. There's no time to say that this actually generalizes the notion of lens complement. So I could uh, talk about that in a totally other talk. And then what is consistency restoration anyway? Well, at least for correctness, it's about saying if we knew things were consistent and we had updates, we can compute updates and new proofs of consistency. So if we have a, a triple sigma type asserting the existence of an old A, an update to a new A, and a proof of consistency between old A and old B, then I compute an element of a new sigma type consisting of a triple of a new B, a new update, and a new proof. And a function that does that, that has that type, that uh, complex parameterized manipulation of sigma triples, is just a constructive witness for the dagger diagram, and correspondingly for double dagger. And so in that sense, consistency taken seriously as a type family just emerges as a proof relevant by simulation. So we can organize the data that we've now seen in two forms um, as a notion of one cell between transition systems and obtain a bi-category. I'll stop there, but there's, there's more, but let me just leave you with a couple of pictures. Why is this good? Composition is somehow faithfully reflected. When we compose bidirectional transformations, we get composition of consistency relations. We'd already seen this for lenses in an implicit way, but now this holds generally. Why might this even be interesting rather than simple-minded as an observation is the Merton-Stevens formalism doesn't actually even admit composition in the first place. It's too impoverished with respect to its data to have well-defined composites. Never mind that they satisfy this tight coherence condition. So blah, blah, blah by categories, and I shall stop there. Thank you. <laughs>
So does it, is it bringing greater rigour or is it putting generalising or, uh, or, I don't know. So my original target was generalisation in thinking about this. I think it's a problem for people who work with lenses that the category of lenses or even lenses for a given choice of source or a given choice of view isn't Cartesian closed. So there's kind of not immediately a structure theory of what lenses should look like other than the defined combinators we already have. So I think there is a question in any passage to categorification or by categorification is does this give us insight into the underlying structure and hence language constructs available to that. And that's certainly a very strong motivation here. Uh, I think the move to the bi-category is an attempt to expose structure that's common to all the formalisms, but there's still a lot of work to do to elucidate what the fine structure is. Yeah, yeah. I think... I'd better have a question not from a co-author, Jeremy. I, uh, yeah. Um, have there been any insights I saw or um, theories that put across one place the other that have been <laughs> I think for this audience, I'm hesitant to mention examples, but yes, they exist. But for experts that know, there's, a, there's an influential but rather mysterious paper by Perdita Stevens in which he reanalyzes the QVTR standard and says, how might we even understand the meaning of check-only mode for QVTR relations for those that know what that is? And she recasts it essentially as a model checking game for the associated by simulation. Now, at the time this paper came out, this was a mysterious, wow, how on earth could that be result, and indeed one that was argued for strictly by analogy. I think now, seeing that bidirectional transformations are just by simulations. It's perhaps not so surprising to see that one particular formalism for expressing the one should have a proof technique associated with it arising from the other. But certainly five years ago that was not known. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks very much. <laughs>